<laughs> What's going on guys and welcome to Rants Red Talk where we discuss all the topics you send through to me on Twitter and um, make sure that you man tune in to the United Stand quiz this evening. Every Saturday at 8 o'clock we're going to be doing a, a quiz. So it's like football based but then it's not football based based there'll be different sections as well last week mark one i came second flex came third um you can also join in from home so make sure you tune in at eight o'clock today for that and also big up everyone that's been tuning into my daily streams 12 o'clock we've been doing gta which has been wavy in the evening um hitman and a bit of Fortnite, which you guys have been playing squads with me which has been fun as well so big up everyone interacting on twitch my Twitch is Ransom Bands Official and the link is in the description. All right, let's get into your questions. First one is from Samuel underscore Idele. It says, what moment do you look back on that still frustrates you till today? For me, it has to be the nanny red card against Real Madrid. Joke of a referee. It was against that scumbag Maureen as well. Oi, that night was so annoying because nanny clearly went for the ball. Clearly went for the ball. It was never a red card. Um, that could have changed. That could have altered history. You know what I mean? We don't know what would have happened from that. For me, it has to be the 4-4 against Everton. The season that we lost the league on goal difference. I remember Stephen Pienaar bagged on that. 4-4, bruv. If we would have won that game, we would have won the league for sure. Like, when we drew that game, I felt inside that that was the moment that we gave the league to Man City, bruv. I do, innit? And... Um, that, that haunts me forever because I just remember watching the match and as the whistle went at 4-4, I was like, this is it. We're done. And you know some, you know when they, they say like your gut is like, I think they say it's like the second heart or something like that, your gut. You know what I mean? Always trust your gut. You know what I'm saying? And my gut told me, yeah, it was like, nah, this is fucked, bro. Like, something ain't working. Something ain't gonna happen now. Do you know what I mean? And that was it. Did they say it's your second heart or your second brain? I think they say your gut's your second brain or something like that, actually. I don't know where I heard that, but it's a real fucking saying, bruv. And I just, I honestly felt that um, the league was gone then. And it proved correct. So definitely that moment. Guys, below, let me know your moments. What was, what was your Manchester United moment that still frustrates you till this day? I think that that has to be it for me, man, because that's the first thing that came to mind and I don't think I've ever gotten over it. Um, next one, at Sporty Josh, um, it says, who do you think will be our next big star that is currently in our youth team and has yet to play a game in the Premier League? The thing is, with, um, with football, yeah, you can't be too sure because there's too many different variables like, I was speaking on the show the other day saying how talented Ethan Laird is, yeah, um, compared to, like, Brandon Williams. Brandon's a good player, but Ethan's better than him, innit? But Ethan's had injury problems. And if Ethan can stay fit and get a run of games, I feel like he'll be in the first team very soon. But again, if he can stay fit, there's so many different things. Um, like, everyone was saying that Jimmy Garner was going to be the next to blow. And... Nobody probably expected Jimmy Garner to not get many games. Like, I was sure that with Pogba McTominay and these men injured, Jimmy would get games. And Oli still never had enough faith in him to throw him in there, which tells me either Oli doesn't rate him as highly as we do, or he's just, he's just not ready, bruv. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not sure which one of the two it is. So I would have to say Ethan based on talent, but... Also, he's a right back. He's got Wan Bissaka ahead of him, and Dallo. So unless Dallo gets sold, there's rumours that Tottenham want him, which wouldn't surprise me because Maureen's the manager. But unless Dallo gets sold, I don't know what route it's going to be, and I don't know if it's going to be an injury route or does he get brought in as an emergency left back or something. I have no idea in it. But out of all the players, I think in terms of ability and who probably deserves it. I think he has to be up there. Also, guys, in the comment section, let me know. Who do you think is the next to break through into the Premier League squad from the youth team? At Bullet XC11. I'm sure that's Roman numerals, but I don't know what number that is. Can't even lie. Um, 
Sanchez wants to leave United and is willing to take a pay cut to do so. Even though they've gotten themselves in this mess, how should the club resolve this matter? Sudu. Well, if he's willing to take a pay cut, then get rid of him, innit? Like, you don't keep players that verbally just don't want to be there. Man are saying, oh, yeah, Pogba wants to leave. He don't want to leave. He's open to a move, innit? Being open to a move, like Agarlo said, he's open to going back to China. Open means I'll listen to offers and boom. That doesn't mean I'm unsettled. It just means that, you know what? If there's something potentially better out there for me, I'm willing to explore those options. Sanchez is not open to a move. He wants to leave, innit? And when someone's adamant they want to go, like Lukaku is adamant he wants to go, you just have to open the door for them. So if he's willing to take a pay cut, I think that's beautiful business for United. Like, even if they don't get any money for him and they let him go on a free, the amount of money that they're saving on his 400 grand a week, they can afford to just write him off and just give him away. Um, if they make any money in a transfer free out of him, then Ed's done amazingly well because Sanchez hasn't done anything since he signed for United to suggest that he's worth any money, to be, to be completely honest. So, if it is the case that um, he definitely wants to leave, I'd say you just um, you pack your bags. You pack his bags for him. So um, I would definitely just tell him to do one. And I'm pretty sure the club will do that. I don't really see an instance that he's still at the club next season. I just don't see who it works for. It doesn't work for us. It doesn't work for him. So I expect to see um, Alexis Sanchez gone. Um, let me know what you would do with Sanchez, guys. Would you just terminate his contract? Well, I wouldn't. I would just let him go, even not even for a fee. Like, I would just get rid. Like, I honestly don't see anyone paying money for Sanchez. He's going to demand big wages, even if it's a pay cut. So, do you know what I mean? Even if the club got 10 million, amazing business. Amazing business, because we got him for free, technically, even though it was a swap with Mkhitaryan. But I have to say, at the time, I reckon he was worth more than Mkhitaryan. All right. At the Red Knight, it says, Rants, I don't understand how people seem to ignore the fact that Rashford's goal-scoring from open play is bang average at best, and yet Martial seems to get criticised for his pr production. I think you mean productivity. Um, do you think Martial could compete for a golden boot if he's put on penalty duty? Absolutely, I think he could. I do. Because I don't know how many penalties Rashford's got, um, goals he's got from the spot. I think it's like eight or nine or something. And he's got a free kick as well, which obviously counts as a set piece. But um, if you add like eight or nine goals... Like, they say on average, yeah, a penalty taker gets about 10 goals a season, isn't it? From the spot, isn't it? A good penalty taker. So if you add 10 goals onto what Martial's doing, plus the assist that he's getting, absolutely, I think he could compete absolutely for a golden boot in the Premier League if he was on penalties. Um, that's not taken away from Rashford as a player. It's not, but people are talking like he's drastic, drastically improved on last season when he hasn't. The difference is he's on penalties now and he wasn't on penalties then. That's why the stats look so much better. But his general gameplay, there's not really much difference. Do you know what I mean? You still get um, glimpses of brilliance from Rashford and you still get glimpses of does he really know what he's doing? Like I think that he's always going to be that player that divides opinion, that frustrates people, but he will provide moments of class in it because he's a talented footballer i just don't think the football iq is in tune with his technical ability like i always make the comparison between him and sterling yeah um rashford's the more gifted footballer sterling's the more intelligent on the pitch do you know what i mean like if rashford had sterling's brain or if sterling had rashford's ability you're looking at a world-class player you're looking at a world-class player there's no i don't think either of them are world-class I genuinely don't, you know what I mean? But I think that um, if he can improve that side of the game, his ceiling's very high. I don't think he will, but I think that Martial gets overlooked and disrespected because, similar to Pogba, he's good at a lot of things. You know what I mean? He's good at a lot of things. Martial's good at linking the play. He's good at dribbling. He's a better dribbler than Marcus, for sure. Close control's ridiculous, bro. Like, absolutely ridiculous like even the goal he scored for Watford do you know what I mean the close control little Cruyff turn but then dink the keeper and that the finesse that he's got like he's the only player in the team that scores that goal and does anything like that I just think that he's good at the dribbling so people are like oh maybe he's a better winger because he's a good dribbler 
He's the best finisher. Like one on one with the goalkeeper, he's ridiculous. Like he's mad. He's mad clinical. You know what I'm saying? He's definitely better in the air. Like, he scored a few headers this season that people were like, wow, Martial can header. So, I just... And he's a better passer with the ball as well. So, I just think that because Martial's got more to his game than just scoring goals, and he's not as quick as Marcus, I think that people are just kind of wanting to do everything. I think Martial's a victim of being good at many things. Whereas Rashford is good at being extremely direct. And being very explosive in it, so um, I think that it's more of the fact that we shouldn't compare them to each other because they're nothing alike as footballers. Like Martial's more intelligent, more technical. Rashford's more explosive and more like unpredictable. Do you know what I mean? Rashford can score a goal. Like I used to compare him to Nani because he could just score a goal out of nowhere, and you're like, holy shit! Like how did he do that? Like that's amazing. That's a world class goal. Do you know what I mean? And Rashford will be a scorer of world-class goals because he's got he strikes a ball very well, isn't it? He'll be a scorer of world-class goals, but I don't think he'll be a world-class player, isn't it? So it's just the same. Whereas I think that Tony can be a world-class player because he's got the IQ and he's got the better round all-around game. But you know what I mean? Tony's probably never going to score as spectacular goals as Marcus. And what can I say? I'm just glad we got both of them. I think that. Um, Tony's intelligence and ability gives Rashford the space to operate on the wing. We saw that when Rashford was playing without Tony, he wasn't getting the space, he wasn't looking as good, and he was actually only scoring penalties to kind of keep his stats up. Um, when Martial's come back, Rashford's having more joy, more freedom, and I do think that, yeah, I think that they thrive on having each other in the team. So, as I said, like, I'm just glad we've got both of them guys, but the the numbers speak for themselves, innit? Like, in open play, um, in less minutes, Tony's having the better season. He, he is having the better season. But it's funny how um, how things are perceived. You know what I mean? And that could be a loads of different factors. Definitely, the English bias is one of them. Um, the way the media talk about it is another. You've only got to look at the team of the year. Um, team of the season, even Jack Grealish is in there. He's had a good season. Is it team of the year season? I don't know. He's had a decent season. Do you know what I mean? Probably get a move to United, which would help. Harry Maguire's in there. Um, do I think that he was one of the two best centre-backs in the league in terms of what they he's brought to the team? And I don't probably don't think so. But again, he's British. Do you know what I mean? So it's just... You're always going to get that bias, isn't it? And that's normal. Like, we live in England, so you do kind of expect that. Um... Let me know what you think on that. Let me know what you think on that, guys, in terms of um, the Martial criticism. Do you think that it's over the top? Do you think that the Rashford praise is excessive? Or do you think that he deserves all the plaudits that he's getting? Um, yeah, just let me know. It's an interesting one. That's always going to be split, in it? Like, you don't have to be, you know what I mean, Rashford FC or Martial FC. They both play for us, innit? You know what I mean, the reason why I back Martial and Pogba so much is because especially the media love an agenda against these two players and there are two best players so i defend these men like because they deserve to be defended but that doesn't mean that i want to put them up against our other players because i don't like i'm glad that we've got bruno so i don't want to compare bruno to pogba i'm glad that we've got martial i'm glad that we've got rashford even so we don't need to compare Rashford to Martial. I think we know that Martial is the striker, Rashford ain't a striker. That's what I've always been saying. It's proven the case, which is why Rashford's not playing up front as the nine anymore, even though Oli had him there. So, yeah. Last but not least, at Donaldo one mil, it says, I see Gomez in several podcasts and he looks like a true ambassador, true mank and a good lad. In terms of personality, he looks like Oli's type of guy. Do you think there's a glimmer of hope? Of him signing a new contract. And if so, can he be used? No, how can he be used? I think that he will sign a new contract because he loves the club. He doesn't want to go anywhere. Um, and I think that he would only not sign a new contract if he's told, just leave. You're not going to get games, in it. I'm sure that Oli's probably telling him, you know what, you'll get your opportunity. Whether I believe that Oli means that, I don't, in it. But I just think that um, he loves the club, he won't want to go for no reason. And he's talented enough. Like, Angel probably sitting there thinking, you know what? 
I'm gonna I'm gonna get my chance because I'm good enough. I'm better than these men in front of me. And to be as good a player as he is, you have to have that self belief anyway, in it. So a part of me probably thinks that Angel backs himself to displace these men. And as I don't know, in it, I know how stubborn Oli is. Like, look at the Lindelof situation. Like, I know that he just likes Lindelof. Why he come in, played really well. Still, Lindelof's the first choice, second um, centre back. So. I don't know if he can change Oli's mind. I don't know if he's going to have to wait till a few men get injured for him to get his um, opportunity. But I would love for him to get his opportunity because I think he's better than a bagger man that we've got and he's definitely more talented than. Do you know what I mean? Like, better than is still yet to be seen because he hasn't been given the opportunity. But I know in terms of talent, Angel Gomez in our squad... I'd argue that he's probably top five in terms of talent. Like, natural talent. Natural talent. Do you know what I mean? I've got Pogba. I've got Martial. And Bruno Fernandes, maybe. Yeah, and that's it. Like, I, in terms of natural talent, and when I mean natural talent, I mean, you can just see that these men were just born to play football, innit? Mason is a special, special talent, but, like, Mason's flair and his touch and that, it's not, it's not an Angel Gomez, isn't it? That's just different. Um, Mason's finishing is ridiculous, isn't it? You could tell that he's just born, he's just a natural born finisher. But like his touch and intelligence and stuff like that, Angel's, Angel's just different, bro. Like I just, I don't even know. There's certain things where you know, with certain footballers, you watch them play and you can't put into words what they have because it's just special, isn't it? That like, Angel's got that, isn't it? Angel's got that in abundance, bro. So, for me, outside of Pogba, Bruno and Martial, yeah, in terms of just pure talent, like natural gift, I think that he's in there. He's in the top five, bro. I think he's in the top five. And that's how highly I rate this guy in terms of ability. So, he just needs to be given a chance. And nothing speaks more about a man's ability than when there's rumours of Manchester United letting him go, you're getting the likes of Dortmund and Barcelona sniffing around, man. These are not joke clubs, in it. They're not joke clubs. So, man have to put respect on Angel. Hopefully, he'll get his chance. Um, let me know what you think about all the topics in the description below. In the description. In the comment section. Make sure you smash that like if you haven't already. Um, big up everyone for stu still tuning in as well. Um, make sure you take a look at the quiz. Join in, innit? Have your pen and paper ready. It's multiple choice. Have a drink with man. I don't know. I might have a drink. You know what I mean? We're chilling. Um, there should be some cool people as well taking part um, as well Like a few well-known people should be um, involved anyway Whether they'll be on the screen is a different story But they'll definitely be in the comments So yeah man, we're keeping it interactive We're keeping you guys entertained And we definitely got more interviews coming up for you on the United Stand as well You look like the Troy Deeney one Good feedback from the Darren Bent one as well And we're not going to stop there So big up yourselves and... Boom, I'll see you during the quiz or after the quiz on Twitch. Man's going to be playing Hitman. Peace. <laughs>